Shalom. Shalom, family. Uh, we want to talk to you about, um, well, we on three titled this one, The Serpent Beguiled Eve and Eve Beguiled the Man. And you know basically where we're coming from. Uh, let's go to uh, Genesis uh, chapter 1, and we're going to pretty much start there. Uh, yes, Genesis is actually Genesis chapter 3, verse 9 through 13. And this is what it says. <clears throat> And Yahuwah Elohim called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and hid, I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou should not eat, shouldst not eat? And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest me, gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. Okay. And Yahuwah Elohim said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. Mm -hmm. Now that's a very interesting word, beguiled. Mm -hmm. Very interesting word, your definition to that word. Okay, the definition of beguiled is to charm or enchant someone, sometimes in a deceptive way. Uh, the synonyms would be charm, attract, enchant, entrance, win over, woo, captivate, bewitch, spellbind, dazzle, hypnotize, mesmerize, seduce. What's amazing is in the Hebrew here, it says to seduce. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Why I find that interesting, i tell you why. Because Satan seduced her mind mm -hmm. with words. Now, why is that so interesting? Hmm? Because he did that and caused her to do something wicked. Mm -hmm. Okay, just with words. Mm -hmm. So words are very seducing. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll tell you why I find that so interesting. Let's go to Timothy. I want you to see the scripture in Timothy. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. And this is what it says. Now the spirit, or the Ruach, speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So you see, Satan, he used words and, 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 and doctrine. He actually was saying something to her that caused her to move, isn't that something? Cause mm -hmm. it to, to do something wicked. So now, looking at this, there he says, in the last days, there's going to be a lot of seducing spirits around. Mm -hmm. Well, I can believe it. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of seducing spirits, and if your mind isn't strong enough, women and men, but especially you women, because Satan knew he could go to her. Why? Because the women are the weaker vessel. They're the weaker vessel. If you notice, over the past, I would say, over the past few months, uh, there's a number of times where we've mentioned about the armor, putting on the armor. There are so many reasons why you have to put on the whole armor of the eye. As a matter of fact, I remember when we were um, in Michigan last year, um, I believe it was uh, Sister Alicia, uh, she, she said, um, she asked a question. Um, about, you know, we were all trying to come up with what um, are all of the pieces of armor? You know, we were just, yeah. just kind of walking and talking about it. You know, all of the armor that we must put on. And we were all just like, okay, we were naming each piece. But um, point being is without the whole armor, you are unguarded at some point. Mm -hmm. Whether your heart is unguarded, whether you don't have the shield or the breastplate or the helmet, 
Now, we know that the helmet guards the mind. That's right. So it guards the mind. And so when you think of uh, the seducing spirits and doctrines of devil, devils, that's what happened to Eve. She was beguiled yeah. by the seducing words that the serpent came to share with her. She was seduced by it. She was beguiled by it. And so she, in turn, took those same words of beguilement to the man. Yeah. And the man was the one who was given uh, the headship, or should I say the the instructions from Yah. Yeah. It was supposed to be in his hands there to be a helpmate. She That's came right. forth out of the man's ribs, right? right? She was put there to be a helpmate. And so the man heed it or yield it to the words of his woman. That's right. And thus relinquished power to that woman at that moment. That's right. And so the Most High said, okay, he came to him and then he said, it was the woman. <laughs> you yeah. know, it was the woman. Now, in today's time, you know, a lot of people talk about, um, how women uh, use uh, sexual things and all kinds of things to, to woo a man, whether he's married to her or whether someone he's dating or, you know, someone he's interested in. You know, we, we think of in terms of those things, but sometimes it's not always um, the, the sex or the sexual in, innuendos. Sometimes it can be words. That's right. That's why it says with her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. That's right. Women can use words to cause men to yield. I mean, a woman can say a trigger word to a man and tend to go into a, a yeah. almost a spellbound. That was one of the things um, that was used to describe the guy. It said spine. That's so right. a woman can use a word to cause a man to yield to what he has to what she has to say to something that he feels like I can't refuse. Well, I got to take heed to what she's saying. But yeah. being a strong man means you got to listen to what she's saying. She's a weaker vessel, and she is she's susceptible to the enemy's suggestions or beguilement. So if you are a strong man, you have to look at those words that this woman is saying to you. Is this of Yah? That's right. Or is this of something or someone else? Yeah, you just can't you just can't gobble up everything she say to you, okay? Mm -hmm. And and also likewise, sometimes the most high may tell you, hearken unto the voice of thy wife. Because at that moment she may be coming to you with something good, mm -hmm. with something that's gonna bless you, right? Mm -hmm. But you nevertheless, anybody, whether it's your wife or anyone that comes to you and say anything, you have to analyze that thing, right? Mm -hmm. You have to analyze it, even if, if you hear something say something to you. You have to analyze the what the voice is saying to you because that's how you can determine if it's a spirit or if it's the ruach. The scripture says, try the spirits by the word to see if they are try of Yah. Try the spirit. You have to see if they are of Yah. That's right. Because there are many voices going on. This is why the scripture warned us. It says in the that's last right. days there will be seducing spirits that's and right. doctrines of devils. So there are seducing spirits trying to woo you. That was another that's um, right. synonym used for beguile, woo you or enchant you or to cause you to go in a direction of darkness. That's right. Once you start traveling down that road of darkness, there may be no getting back for you. That's right. Look at what happened to Adam and Eve in the garden. That's right. There was no getting back from that place. Once they started traveling down that road. There was no getting back. There was uh, no getting back. Let me share some with you. That just like she brought up the story about uh, this Proverbs where she quoted I, I want to read some more because I want you to understand this actually is a prophecy about the seducing spirits that will come in the last days. And notice this here. Uh, this is Proverbs chapter 7, verse 6. It says, For at the window of my house I looked through my casement and beheld, um, beheld among the simple ones. Mm -hmm. So this was a simple person, a simple young person. And this earned, I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding. Okay. That's what the scripture tells you, you know, like getting get understanding. He was void of understanding, right? Passing through the street near her corner, and he went away to her house in the twilight, in the evening, in black and dark night. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of a harlot, supped on her. Now, notice what it says that she is loud and stubborn, her feet abide not in her home. Now is she without 
and now in the streets and laugh and wait at every corner. See, how can she be one woman and she's at every corner? Mm -hmm. It's a spirit. In the last mm -hmm. days, this spirit is going to be at every corner, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Seducing okay? spirits. That's right. Seducing spirits. That's right. Yes. At every corner. Mm -hmm. Now, notice this here. Let's go further down and let's look at what it says here. Okay. She makes this statement to him because she's trying to seduce him. She says, come, let us take our field of love until the morning. Let us so lace ourselves with love, for the good man is not at home, and he has gone on a long journey. Wow. And have taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the appointed day. That's the Mashiach. See, he's coming back at an appointed day. But meanwhile, while he's gone, let's do this wickedness. You see this? It's right here in the scriptures. Then it says, with her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. She literally forced him. Now, where was he going? The scripture says her way was the way to hell going down the chambers of death. Mm -hmm. So this is what the Most High was trying to um, show you here in his word. The lady spirits would be in every corner, men and women. Okay, so this is why we have to have on the whole arm. We, we got to protect our minds and men. Let me say this, okay? Satan knows that he can use that woman against you. Now we got proof. We got proof, and not just in the story of Adam and Eve. What other proof you have? What's one of the greatest stories in the scriptures? Samson. Mm -hmm. Here you got a man that's the symbol of all strength, all power, might, and strength. And the Most High did that on purpose to show how a woman can bring that mighty man down, mm -hmm. right? That mighty man down, this one woman can bring that man down. Somebody like Samson, who was a Nazarite, vowed to never cut his hair, she got him to cut his hair. She got him to break his vow, you see? Or she, she beguiled him, so that they could cut his hair after he was asleep. Mm -hmm. So basically, let me show you something here. Now, you remember the story about seducing spirits? Mm -hmm. Listen to what it says here. I want you to see what it says here. Okay. In verse 24, 25, it says, Let not thine heart decline unto her ways. Go not astray in her path. For she hath cast down many wounded, yet many strong men have been slain by her. Are you hearing that? Mm -hmm. Many strong men. Why? Because they hearkened to her voice. See, so that's what seducing and beguilement and bewitching and enchanting yes. does. That's right. Take a man that's supposed to be the strength of his house. He is supposed to be the leader and the strength. That's and right. he has a direction that he is going in, right? And he is being led by Yah. All it takes is the bewitching or the enchantment once it gets a hold of this up here. Yep. It usually happens. Think about a man who, um, I'm just going to say a man who decides to be unfaithful in his marriage, right? He can be as strong as all get out. But if that bewitching of another woman gets in his mind, it's like his, his whole existence becomes mush in her hands. Yeah. You see, now it doesn't just have to be another woman. It can even be um, your, your wife, okay? If there is a desire that this woman has and that man is trying to be the strong man of his house and that woman doesn't want something to go in a particular way, all she has to do is say the right words to guide and twist that situation in the direction she wants to go and turn that man's strength into mush. We see that happen a lot in cases where, um, say, there may be a divorce um, pending or whatever. Mm -hmm. You'll have a woman, and it don't even have to be divorced. A woman can know that a man's soft spot is his children, right? So she can use those children to threaten that man to the point where he will bend and twist to whatever she wants because she yeah. has used his weak spot which is his offspring That's she right. knows that he loves those children so she will use those children as a weapon That's and right. almost render that man helpless to where 
he has to go in the direction that she wants That's right. to control that man. That is a form of binding the strong man yet again, so that the strong man cannot go or proceed in the direction that Yah may have been leading him, because That's he right. now has a distraction or a deterrent or a beguilement or a bewitchment or a, an enchantment that is causing him to get off track and go in the wrong direction. And once you get off track, Adam, mm -hmm. once you get off track, and the Most High gets wind of you being off track because you allowed Eve to beguile you, you will be thrown out of that position that Yah put you in. Judgment. Judgment. That's what happened. He got judged. Mm -hmm. Eve got judged too, mm -hmm. right? Even Hasatai mm -hmm. got judged also. You see, mm -hmm. so it's just it's a thing where we just got to understand, you know, men, you have to be strong. OK, you have to be strong. And I know those of you that are married, you love your wives. Right. I love my wife. Right. My wife loved me. But I'm here to tell you, me and my wife have the same mindset as following Yah. Mm -hmm. OK, I go start doing some foolishness and crazy. My wife ain't going to follow me down that road. No. I guarantee you. No. Okay, she's not gonna follow me down that road, you know. And if I start trying to pull the kids down that road, she's gonna fight like crazy to keep me from guiding those kids down that road, <laughs> you know. And guess what? I'm the same way, mm -hmm. okay. I'm like, hey, this is the direction we got to go in. And if my wife starts saying something crazy, then I'll be the same way. Mm -hmm. That's how you have to be, right. you know. We love each other, I love my wife, you know. And of course, anything she do come to me with, I'm gonna listen to it. If I come to her and I say, baby, um, there's something I want to talk to you about, something that I want to do. What do you think about this? Of course, I'm going to get her opinion because I value her knowledge and her wisdom and her understanding. So I may come and say, uh, um, honey, I was thinking about doing this. What do you think about that? And she may say, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Or she may say, honey, I don't know because I'm looking at this. It looks like it could be dangerous. I don't know. And so if it's something like that, then I, I say, well, what? Let me seek the most high on this thing. Mm -hmm. That's how we are. You understand? That's how we are. We try not to go down um, any path. We're cautious. Should I say very cautious? Okay, about anything. But that's how you husbands, you got to be. You just can't just, oh, you know, my wife is saying this, so I got to do it. I guess she, she, she want me to go in this direction. She want me to go in that direction. What do y'all want you to do? What direction do y'all want you to go in? Huh? That's why the scriptures say that a woman got to cover her head. Mm -hmm. She got to cover that man because she ain't going to be able to hear what y'all wants her to do. You see? So then it, it's, uh, it's called balance. That's all. Mm -hmm. We got to be balanced, right? Yeah, when you look at good scriptural ex examples, um, Jezebel is a good example of um, having a man that was out of Yah's will and she supported him in every wicked sure thing. Did he wanted to do. <laughs> yeah. She supported every wicked thing that he wanted to do. Yeah. And so vice versa, you have this going on, um, period, where you have those who will support the wickedness of their spouse just because they're married to them. Yeah. You have those who will support the wickedness of their children just because they gave birth to them. That I, fact, mean, oh, wait, wait. I mean, look at the number of Christian pastors and bishops and all yeah. of this who have children. Eli is a good example. Yeah, we talked about Eli the other day because he did not reprimand his sons. The Most High killed them and him. You see, that's right. Um, in the Christian church, you have so much foolishness going on, where parents are now starting to justify, "Oh, my son is this way, or my daughter's that way," and they will justify it in the name of love. But we are supposed to put Yah first in all things. So if my husband decides to go astray, I am not going astray with him. Yeah. It has nothing to do with uh, we ride or die together. No. As for <laughs> me in this house, right here, <laughs> I'm going to serve Yah. So if my husband decides to go mm. astray, I'm not going astray with him. That's right. Now, now let me share something with you. That ride or die together mm -hmm. is an example in the scriptures. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 5, right? Mm -hmm. But there was a certain man named Ananias and Sapphira, his, Sapphira, his wife, sold possession and kept back part of the price. And his wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. So they had conspired within their minds to do this thing together. Mm -hmm. But Peter said to Ananias, wife, Satan, fill thine heart.
to lie to the whole to, to set up our rule mm -hmm. to keep back part of the price of the land while it remained is it not thine also it goes further down and says that if thou is not lying unto men but unto elohim and i and I was hearing the words fell down and gave up the ghost he died right there now then then his wife came in she didn't even know he had died so she comes in next and gonna do the same thing you understand that so this this ride or die together, we're gonna go to hell together. It's like, we're gonna do wicked together. We're gonna do all of this stuff. It's like you have when it comes to serving y'all, you better have a separate mind. That's right. So one decides to go with strength. That's right. Now if a man is walking and living upright, he is the head, he's supposed to be the leader of that house, as long as he's leading you righteously. Now, if he's leading you down a path of darkness, that's different. Likewise, if you are a man and you are supposed to be the head of that house, that's right. and Hamashiach is your head, there should never be um, an instant where the woman takes headship over you and is now running and ruling that house. Telling you what to do, what not to do. This is how we gonna do this. I, I'm not, I'm not joining you on that one. You know, I mean, women can be. Um, I, I, I've seen them. You know what I mean? They they can get a hold of a man and control him completely. That man won't. He won't be able to do nothing, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, the man, you, man, you got to stand up and be a man. You got to mm -hmm. be a strong man, you know. I want to read this comment by Bitter Truth here. It say, it, it says here that Adam threw Eve under the bus when y'all confronted him on what he did correct. <laughs> now, it makes you wonder how things would have gone if Adam said, "You know what? What you did was wrong, Eve." You know, mm -hmm. the most high told me that we are not to do this. Yeah. But you have done this thing. And I'm not joining in with you on this. Mm -hmm. It really makes you wonder how things would have gone. Yeah. But as we see, the serpent beguiled Eve. Eve beguiled the man so that now the man stepped out of the will of Yah and was judged profusely full and that judgment has carried on throughout the generations of this earth until today and has passed on to every living mm -hmm. creature now i want to say this too because um we know what the scripture says okay the scripture specifically says that adam was not deceived okay mm -hmm. understand where we're coming from with this lesson okay mm -hmm. we know that technically adam was not deceived but adam loved his wife he was beguiled by her and he allowed her to um to hand him the fruit after she bit it first and when he should have stopped her from biting it he should have stopped her from talking to the snake you know he should have took control over that whole situation but because he he did he didn't do it so then he was forced to eat the fruit too mm -hmm. you see so basically understand where we're coming from this okay man you know what y'all said stand on it you know what y'all said in his word you know what he's saying to you in your life stand on it stand on what he showed you don't be like the 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 the, the, the waves of the sea tossed to and fro okay don't be like the waves learn how to stand up mm -hmm. and one more scripture too i want to read real quickly here this one is coming from um saint corinthians chapter 11. Before you read those, real quick, I want to read these two comments before they get past us. Mm -hmm. Blessed by the Most High says that the man diminished his headship upon his hearkening to his wife. And then the next one was he submitted to Eve instead of the Yah. Wow. You hear that? Mm -hmm. He submitted to Eve. Listen to this scripture here. It says, for I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through subtlety, your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Hamashiach. Mm -hmm. So there's a simplicity in the Mashiach, in walking in him, that this demon wants to beguile you the same way he beguiled Eve so that you won't see how simple it is to walk in the Mashiach. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. So, if you're walking in the Mashiach, that simply means that he is leading and you are following. That's right. You now the scripture says, where he leads me, I will follow. That's right. It says, my sheep hear my voice and another they will not follow. You won't hear all these voices telling you to go here and there and do this or that. 
That's if you right. are following after Hamashiach, you will hear his voice and you won't follow another voice. But That's right. what's going on in this last day, there is a rise in seducing spirits. The scripture tells us this, yep. seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. I saw a post that someone um, shared earlier today where they were saying, uh, they were pretty much saying guard your mind because there are a lot of spirits. They said millions of spirits have gone out into the world, so guard your mind. Millions. You hear that? Mm-hmm. And I would I would even venture to say more than millions. Yeah. I, I see that of the increase of demonic activity is off the chain. Off the chain. You hear this? And see, it don't just have to be, oh, yeah. um, it enters into someone's mind to go rob a bank or kill someone. Everyone always looks for the obvious things, such yeah. as uh, killing and murdering and things of that nature. That's not the only time Satan enters into a heart. Satan can um, lead you down a road that's so dark. Yeah, he don't have to be in you. He can influence you. He can influence you. Again. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, the scripture says there is a way which seems right. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it can seem like you're going in the right direction. But that's scripture right. Says, but the end thereof are the ways of death and destruction. That's right. So Satan is beguiling minds in so many different ways. That's right. It doesn't have to be attached to religion all the time. It doesn't have to be attached to any particular racial group. That's right. When you look around, demonic activity and suggestion and seducing spirits and doctrines of devils are on the rise. And a lot of people are being susceptible to them. A lot of people are mm-hmm. giving heed to them, yielding their members to them. Some know what's happening. Some think they may know. Some have no idea what is happening to them. All we see is the end result of this demonic rise in people, the demonic influence, causing people to do things that they wouldn't have normally participated in. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I've seen, let me tell you something, okay? I've seen, and, and the way you can tell these spirits, because these spirits, they make an about face. They make a person actually just turn completely around. They'll be going on and one There'll be one way all of a sudden you see them just change suddenly like that, just suddenly. Let me tell you something. I saw this happen years ago to someone. Years ago. This was some 20 plus, plus, almost 30 years ago. And this brother was one way, and then all of a sudden he got a demon in him. Mm -hmm. And he was supposed to have been saved, filled with the Ruach with the evidence of the gifts of the spirit. And when this, when I ran into this brother, I walked in on him and uh, he was um, just, the look in his eyes, he had changed within one day. The day before when I saw him, he looked different. But this particular day when I saw him, I knew demons was in him. I'm looking at him right in his face. And he said, and he looked at me, he said, I just don't have the strength to go on anymore. Mm. I was like, man, how can you change that quickly like this? Mm. You know, and he had totally just said he just given it up, the walk and everything. And I stood there looking at this brother in his face, and you could see it in his eyes that something had happened to him. Mm-hmm. You know, I've seen it happen too many times. You gotta hold on. It's really sad, like um, this person here says that's why we need the ruach. That's right. This is why it's important that you see the Ruach HaKadosh. That's right. The indwelling, not just a good feeling. Not That's just right. um, something that causes you to cry from time to time or, or jump around or do anything like that. But the, the feeling of the Ruach HaKadosh, that to me is part of the armor that we need to put on so that we can stand against the wilds or the devices That's of right. the devil. Because the enemy, he's doing what he is supposed to do in this last day. That's right. He is a part of those seducing spirits that have gone out to deceive the That's hearts right. and minds of men and women everywhere. Children as well. That's right. The enemy is out here doing his thing. And we as the children of the eye have got to put on the whole armor of yeah, God. Yeah, we got to put it on. Because this is not a game, people. A lot of people think this is a game and they are playing this game, but they don't understand there are consequences to this game. If you play this game and you are not being led and guided by the Ruach HaKadosh. You won't win this game. That's right. You will not win. We have got to be led of the Ruach. We have to understand that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Whenever you come up against things, you have to look at, okay, am I dealing with a human here 
or am I dealing with principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places? Yeah, exactly. Um, this brother had a really interesting um, question here. He said he watched the Jezebel spirit video that we did. Mm -hmm. Did you see the comment that he left here? Uh, no, I didn't. Let me go up to it here. Okay, it says, um, this is Richardson. He said, I saw the Jezebel video, Watchmen agree with polygamy where the man works and takes care of the family and not the other way around. What in the Bible makes this right if the wife does not agree? Okay, well, let me say this to you, okay? Um, we know, okay, based on certain things that we see in the scripture, that um, that's something that I can't find it in the scripture where it's wrong for a man to have a second wife. Okay, now, but you men that may be desiring a second wife, you got to understand what you're doing here. Okay, if your wife don't agree with it, so what you gonna do? Divorce her? You gonna go get the second wife anyway, and then she leaves you, and then you back down to one wife anyway, right? <laughs> Basically, let me say this to you. Okay, I think that because of our situation, we're in the land of our captivity. We have not been conditioned for that type of life. So I think that for the most part, we should leave it alone because we're just not conditioned for it. We haven't been conditioned for it. Our women aren't conditioned for it. Our men aren't conditioned for it. Then I got to ask the brother, why do you want another wife? What's what's going on that you feel you need to? Uh, you got some lust working on in your mind or something or in your heart that you feel like you got to have another one? Uh, what's going on? What are your reasons behind it? Okay. So those are my questions, okay? But I, I actually believe, that I've seen people that have those relationships and it's working fine. The woman was in agreement with it and she's working fine and her and the woman, her and the, and the second wife, they get along well, no problems, no issues. But most times, man, he get, if he get another wife, if his wife accepts them, then they see, you know, there's fights and, and, and <laughs> you know what I mean? It's problems and the marriage has caused more problems. I think that we need to um, be more spiritual instead of carnal or fleshly, okay? I mean, think about how spiritual Shaul was. He said, I, I wish that you would rather be like me with no woman, so spiritual like a eunuch, that he's so spiritual and all he think about is this, yeah, he think about nothing in the flesh. You understand? So basically, He's, um, I think that it's better that you stay with your wife and don't try to get another wife because I think that we're just not ready for that. You know, most, most of, of our men and women just aren't conditioned for it. You know, well, a lot of people aren't going to like hearing, um, of Satan's kind of things yeah. because they say, well, according to the scripture, you, we got a right, we got a right, we got a right. Yeah. Well, if you just take a look around, all you have to do is look around. Look around. In any situation um, where you see people um, pushing and pushing something or pushing some type of doctrine or belief or understanding, whether it's true or not, look around. Look at the end results. In this day and time, you don't see too many good examples of this turning out or working out well. I'm going to say in American culture because you have in other countries right. where this thing, they've been doing it for thousands of years and it's working out well. That's right. But there are certain spirits and de de um, demonic influences in certain areas that infiltrate things. That's right. You know, scripture says that um, our people will turn the grace of Yah into lasciviousness. That's right. Sexual immorality is on the rise, <laughs> you see. And so you're getting more and more stories of people entering into these kind of marriages, not for kingdom building, as they claim, but for the reasons of sexual immorality. Yeah. Um, I like what Blessed by the Most High says here. This is a spiritual war, and we must remember that. This battle cannot be fought <laughs> yeah. in the flesh. In the flesh, that's right. Many are trying to fight these battles in the flesh, right? But this is a spiritual war that's going on. Everyone who tries to fight this battle in the flesh is going to lose profusely that's right but when you realize that this is a spiritual battle and you put it in yah's hands and you allow mm -hmm. yah to fight this battle yeah. for you this is a spiritual of course you do the things that he tells you to do in a spiritual battle right 
which is mostly putting on the whole arm of Yah that you can stand, right? Right. When you put on that Yah, you might be dealing with something that seems to be an issue in the flesh, but you have to understand that this is a spiritual warfare that you're in. And because it's a spiritual warfare, there are going to be spiritual consequences for those who engage in a fleshly battle. Yeah. So you be careful. All your decisions you make according to that flesh of yours, mm -hmm. you better be careful. That's right. I don't need another wife. I have one beautiful wife right here. I don't want another wife. You know, I don't need another one, you know. I have mm -hmm. a, I have one really good helpmate right here. You know, and so I think that um I think that we get into the flesh and, and I think that in all honesty, you know, things happen to men and this is why we have to be spiritual okay think about that it was a woman that caused samson to lose his sight and his strength it was a woman okay so what was it in his flesh that was causing him to um want to be with this foreign woman because she's a foreign woman mm -hmm. huh what was in his flesh that made him weak? It was the lust that was in his flesh. The scripture says, can a man take fire in his bosom and not be burned? Huh? What was it talking about when it said that? It's talking about lust. People are taking this thing into their bosom and they thinking that, oh, well, I want another one. I want another wife. I want another wife. And, and they get into arguments with their wives because they got something stirring up in them and they, they trying to, let me tell you something. It ain't going to stop at one. Okay, many men have that same lustful thirst as Solomon. Solomon couldn't stop it when he, he, he got up to no more than 800 women that he was fooling around with, and it still wasn't enough. See, when you got lust, you can't control that. That's why that lust got to be dealt with, you see. And so, I just, it's just carnal. I feel like it's uh, fleshly, and I think that we should be concentrating on, on really fighting this battle. Because Satan is really after seducing spirits mm -hmm. in the last days. Yeah. There's some men you can't you can't go to sleep without a demon crawling in the bed with them. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm talking about a, a incubus spirit, mm -hmm. a succubus spirit, you know, mm -hmm. cramming in the bed with them. You know, we're talking about demons are doing these things. Mm -hmm. And so we as men got to be stronger in our flesh, in our in our spirit, mm -hmm. you know, and not give heed to our flesh, let's say. Mm -hmm. You know. You know, I saw another interesting post where, um, you know, a brother was talking about all the things that are going on in the world. I mean, so much is going on. Um, there's so many topics to cover. You know, one of them being the Section 8. You know, I'm not going to get into it right now, but a lot of you may have seen that. Um, but there is so much that is coming down the pipeline, so much um, turmoil and uncertainty for a lot of people. Uh, financial troubles, woes for the whole yeah, world. That's right. America is due for something like that. I mean, we've sat idly by, we've watched other countries go through things and um, watched how people are struggling to make it to even exist, right? But now that this time is upon us, many of us are still sitting back comfortable, uh, thinking that uh, troubles and woes can't bother us. As we look around and we see these things happening to our own people, mm -hmm. most of us won't even focus on what can we do for our own people, okay? What can we do for our own people? What can we do for ourselves? Now, I understand if you're saying, okay, I can't even help myself, much less my own people. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But our focus is so much on nonsense. Um, as a matter of fact, the particular post was saying that why are we paying so much attention to all these trivial matters, mm -hmm. all of these nonsensical issues? That's right. We're paying so much attention to all this stuff, but the hammer is about to fall. Yeah, the hammer is about to fall. The hammer is about to fall, and you have people so caught up in nonsense that it's like there's no getting a hold to their mind. The only thing that will be able to shake some of our people is when trouble has visited this nation. Yeah. Trouble is already in this nation. Okay, it just seems like it has it's kind of skipping over people, though it hasn't skipped over anyone. It's just a matter of time before it hits. 
and this whole nation is going to experience something that other nations have been experiencing for a long time. Yeah. It's time to get our spiritual houses in order, family. Yeah, it's time. And I know a lot of you think that this is invoking fear. No, it's not invoking fear. Mm -hmm. It's just time to stop playing these games that we are playing. Yeah. There are there's no more time for games. It's time for us to get our spiritual houses in order. Yeah. And stop allowing ourselves to be beguiled by seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. This person can say exactly. This is why. I am always cautious what and who I allow in my life. We have to be careful. Some people are not spiritually strong enough. Wow, did you hear that? Mm -hmm. And the devil finds a doorway sometimes. It's a loved one. So you got to be careful, people, that you allow in your life, even because these people can be susceptible to spirits. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. It says the devil finds a doorway sometimes. It's a loved one. And that is so true. I mean, the number yeah. of stories where I've heard and even experiences of our own where uh, it can be a loved one. It can be a family member that has um, demonic issues or things that are going on within their own lives who are not spiritually in tune with the Most High, who are yeah. hearing voices, doing things. That's right. And what do, what do they call it? The medical world calls it um, um, schizophrenia. Paranoid schizophrenia. These are people who actually have demons. And it don't even have to be that bad. You can have people who will allow themselves to be used or seduced by spirits to go yeah. against something that the Most High has blessed or something that the Most High has said or something that the Most High has ordained. People are being used every day for all kinds of things. That's right. I mean, I look at children who go into the public school system, they might have parents. Um, that raised them up in the church. Parents that have the Ruach HaKadosh, they send their children to these schools. Yep. And sometimes those children come home with spirits yeah. because you put them in an environment to where they did not have on the whole armor of Yah. That's right. We are moving about in this world foolishly as the children of Israel. That's right. We're supposed to be the light of the world. Are we showing light or darkness to the world? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something I tell you. We got to be a light. You know, we got to be a light. We got to walk in the light, too. You can't just be a light. You got to walk in it, too. You know, hallelujah. But anyway, um, you know, think about what we said about keeping the whole armor. Protect your mind. You hear me? Protect your mind. Okay? Protect your mind. These spirits are speaking to people in and, 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 and record numbers of demons record numbers you know this person put here std uh, sexually transmitted demons wow. <laughs> so, yes yeah so uh guard your mind you hear me you hear what i'm saying guard your mind okay um let me say something to you okay the reason why you gotta guard your mind is because there's always going to be someone speaking to your ears mm -hmm. Trying to beguile you or bewitch you. Satan don't just come and speak to you in the air. He likes to use people. Mm -hmm. So that's why you got to be careful because people will come and they'll say this, they'll say that. And all these things they're saying are trying to get you to go in a certain direction. And they could be loved ones coming to you. It could be a husband. It could be a wife. It could be kinfolk. It could be friends. You got to guard your mind and you got to deal with things according to the scripture. He can speak to your thoughts or your intuitions. Yeah, he can. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I've seen that happen so many That's times. Right. Where a person, sure um, they don't even know where the thought came from. It just That's showed right. up. Sometimes it shows up in a dream. Yeah. And they, <laughs> they give heed to it. They listen to this thing. I mean. The when, people that uh, actually testify on it. Yes. Like someone says, the demonic spirit's favor, favor gateway is emotions. And then wow. someone else uh, referenced. Um, um, drinking and spirits or whatever mm -hmm. drugs right yeah for some it's drugs think about those who have taken drugs and then all of a sudden they think they can fly next thing you know you see them all on top of a building this is a spirit that's trying to get them to kill themselves right yeah and so uh, spirits can come in many forms you can mm -hmm. watch television and you can be you can sit there and be watching a movie then all of a sudden you hear something said in the movie and it triggers a thought or it triggers some type of emotion 
and it triggers a demonic um, suggestion. So it doesn't matter. It could be a movie. Yeah. It could be a song. That's right. I remember That's someone right. said a long wow. time ago they were listening to a song, and they said a spirit of suicide came on them from listening Listen to, to a song. song. Yeah. So these spirits are out here. They're That's using right. whatever they, they want to use. They're using people. Mm. They're using music. They're using yeah. movies. They're using loved ones. Using animals. Remember um, um, Son of Sam? Mm -hmm. He said there was, a, it was a, uh, his neighbor's dog. There was a demon in his neighbor's dog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they got a hold of him. You see? So you just got to be careful. You got to really be careful. You got to protect yourself. Guard your you heart. Know, guard, guard your heart. Mind. Let's guard your mind. That's right. You have to remember, if you don't guard your heart and your mind, there are going to be consequences for you. Look at all these people we talked about that were supposed to be strong. Yeah. They were supposed to be men in charge. We talked about Samson, so very strong, right? But he was rendered weak. Weak. At the hands or the voice of a woman. Of a woman. Wow. Beguiled by a woman. That should, that, in my opinion, that alone should make both men and women say, Man, his his most has giving you the strongest man in the scriptures, mm -hmm. physically strong, taken down by a woman. Mm -hmm. So that should have made us all sit there and say, you know what? We gotta be careful. We gotta seek the most high. We can't go to the left unless Yah tell us to. We can't go to the right unless he tells us to. We're gonna stand still, we're gonna do only what he wants us to do. Mm -hmm. Don't you know that don't just mean things in your life, where you should go, where you should live, what you should do, what business venture you should go into. That governs everything. Huh? That's spiritually. That's everything in your life. You supposed to you supposed to do things according to Yah. Right? Right? That's everything. Mm -hmm. Not just the things you think. It's everything in your life. Even how you how you speak. You see, how you do things, the words that come out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. You see? Hallelujah. Scripture tells you every eye of a word, we ain't gonna give account to in a day of judgment, or so even your words. That's right. Well, anyway, it's getting late. We thank you for joining us, family. Yes, and don't you forget what we said. Keep that whole armor on. Put on, Put on that whole armor, armor, every bit of it. So that you can stand. That's right. Because one piece of missing armor could be your takedown. That's right. It can destroy your very walk with the most high. That's right. I'm going to say this real quick. Um, I was thinking about um, G. Craig Little. Some of you may know who he is. But I think about how he was saying that he ran into some Hebrew Israelites and he say they, they're all strong into it and um, just preaching it, talking about it. And yeah. he says five years later, you find them and they say they don't know what they believe. In. Yeah. They don't know what they believe anymore. And they all drugged out and all of this kind of stuff. So you got to guard your mind and your heart because there are so many mm -hmm. ways of doctrine. That's right. So many of them. Mm -hmm. And seducing spirits. Don't mm -hmm. forget that. We okay. love you, family. We love you. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Shalom. Shalom.